Recently, I'd ranked up to level 1000 in GTA Online. In that time, I've made over $1.2 billion, spent over $740 million, played over 7,000 hours, and killed almost 20,000 players. I've bought every business and property I could, owned around 300 vehicles, all the helicopters and planes I could ever want, and generally act like money is not an issue. So I wondered what it would be like to get rid of all of that wealth and start all over again. This is my journey on how I went from riches to rags. Previously on Riches to Rags. After arriving back at my arcade with my new heist prep equipment, I overheard Jimmy talking about his new Viagra tablets. It's not working. These dumbass pieces of shit. With Lester also trying out Jimmy's Viagra tablets, he was now confident of making the most of the orgy with the Asian bitch and her friends. By the time I'm done, I will do them all. Hi! <laughs> You remember Miss Chang? Call me Asian bitch. Lester then set out explaining just how easy it would be to rob a casino five times a night for the next six months. This time they're all going to be much more um, interrelated. You see, what you scope sets up what you can prep, which then sets up how you do the score depending on how hard you look. Scoping at the casino also gave me the opportunity to unlock the most annoying, pointless, and worst character to ever appear in GTA in the form of this bellend, Young Ancestor. Oh, this party fucking sucks! Yeah, this sucks! You might find something we can use to our advantage. Ah, what's that look like? The green stuff, huh? Yeah, it's too much currency, so we'll still need to launder it through a buyer. Okay, now that we know what we're stealing, it's time to choose how to steal it. Aggressive it is! Why didn't I guess? <laughs> And we're back! Before I could start my first casino heist as a poor person, I first had to collect the equipment needed to pull off such a feat. The first mission was gathering up the weapons we'd need. This involved me blowing up a load of police, stealing one of their cars, picking up just one case of guns when I was in a vehicle that could clearly carry two, delivering the case of guns and they're going all the way back to get the other guns. Weapons delivered and heist prep complete. For the next prep mission, I had to choose from four sets of cars. We need to steal decent getaway vehicles that are in no way associated with our bank accounts. There was this heap of crap, this pile of junk, this load of cat, and these, which were pretty good. Okay, let's get your getaway vehicles. This might not sound like the best idea, but you're gonna steal them off the cops. <laughs> nah, trust me on this. It all makes perfect sense. I just don't have time to explain it to you. I opted for the BMW E30. I mean the Sentinel Classics, which were under police protection for some unknown reason. I had to sneak into their compound without them knowing I was there, which was really easy as the guard patrolling was not only extremely short-sighted, but also incredibly deaf. Both getaway cars delivered and another heist prep complete. The next heist prep mission first saw me getting attacked by a government agent disguised as a delivery driver. A government agent. A government agent. A government agent. A government agent. I found one with an appropriately awful human rights record for you to take out and impersonate. Use his card to get into the facility. I had to locate the guard, then take him out as quietly as possible. Then give him a quick massage as if he were Jeffrey Epstein and I was a 14 year old girl. I then had to sneak into the server farm and run around until I located a case with a gigantic green arrow on it just in case I wasn't sure as to which one it was. Hacking device sourced, another heist prep complete. Then it was on to everyone's favourite aggressive prep, Vault Explosives. Rather than following the waypoint, I went straight to where I needed to be in order to first take out the helicopter. Okay. I, I then totally died on purpose so I could respawn at the waypoint in order to obtain a boat after murdering several more people. Oh, 
After jumping into the sea with a homing launcher, you know, as you do, I then had to swim around like I had no sense of direction or autonomy until I could collect the sunken cargo. After delivering one, of course I had to go back to get the other one. Knowing I'd be getting battered by the never-ending buzzards above, I parked my armoured Karuma as close to the edge as possible for a quick escape. Another heist prep complete. So, we need key cards to get into the vault access tunnel. The Duggins contracted the same company as Bolingbroke Pen. That's where we're gonna get some cards. For this mission, normally I'd take my Mark II oppressor straight to the prison, blow everyone up, grab the key cards, and I'd be out. But being poor, I had to use a much longer, stealthier approach. This meant shooting dead a bus driver. Right, you know what to do. Hijack that bus and you can use it to drive right through the front gates of Bolingbroke. Stealing his clothes and bus, then driving around the prison. Have a look around Tower 2. You should find him in there somewhere. Before knocking someone out. And rubbing my hands onto some stones. Great, you got him. Now get the hell out of there. Now I just had to drive out of there without alerting the prison guards to any unusual behaviour. Speaking from extensive personal experience, if you're planning on punching right through the front of a hornet's nest, you'd better be wearing gloves, or in this case, the experimental new body armor being developed by our friends Meriwether Security over at Humane Labs. Knowing I'd still had to do the Duggan shipments mission, my next plan was pure genius. Firstly, I would magically change into a scuba suit, hop in this boat to go all the way from here, to hear. After swimming through this long ass tunnel, it was simply a matter of, as always, to murder loads more people. And then to collect the armoured suits. My ingenious plan was to then keep the buzzard in order to complete the Duggan shipments mission, saving me $25,000. But unfortunately, it was repossessed by Meriwether. Even out the odds a little. Duggan wants his guards armed to their big buck teeth, but we can cut off their supply. For this mission, I had to blow up this guy. Boom! This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Oh God, there it is! There it is, people! There! So, what was it? Oh yeah, we we're going after the guard patrol routes. These dumb cowboys actually keep hard copies. So you're just popping the trunk of a security guard's car and photographing the roster. The next mission was the patrol routes, where I had to hit this guard until he spoke Japanese. Take a close up of the roster with your camera, send it over, then get yourself out of there. I tried my best not to get spotted, so I waited for the patrolling guard to disappear before taking a photo of a suitcase and a clipboard. Job done, and all that was left was me to blow everyone up for the lols. starting to look like a serious case of workplace negligence, and we might be able to get a security pass off him at the morgue. They won't just let anyone in there, so you're gonna have to steal a hearse and dress up like a funeral director to get in. Having already obtained the funeral director outfit, I thought I would bypass all of this by simply putting it on. But nope, it was clearly the wrong type of funeral director outfit. What I needed was one that looked exactly the same after smacking this guy in the face to get it. You. Once inside, I had to Jeffrey Epstein yet another guy, only this time he was dead. Like Jeffrey Epstein. So, if we're gonna do some tunneling to the vault, we need a drill. 
And not just any drill. Take whatever you just imagined, multiply it by the size of a building, and you're somewhere close. And for the last prep mission, I had to collect a boring machine. What's your problem, you man? idiot? Which was a bit unfair as I didn't think it looked boring at all. And to be honest, the only reason I did this mission was so I could make that amazing joke. The best part of this mission was having to drive past here in order to get to here to drive it all the way back here. And now I realised why it was called the boring machine. With all the preps now complete, I just needed to buy some sweeties before starting my first casino heist. Yep, that's great. All ready to go, I was a bit concerned that Lester wasn't taking this very seriously, as he was dressed up like Craig David. Ooh, hoo, 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 looking good, Uncle Lester. Why were you creeping round the glass? Wendy, get this dope cleaning toilets. I don't want to see him for the rest of the day. Yo, will you go clean the toilets? Like, now? Seeing as Lesser thought it was fine to dress up, made me think that maybe I should probably join in too. Today, their luck is gonna run out. Because if there is one thing that I just love screwing more than a casino, it is a Asian bitch. Yeah! And we have planned, we have prepped, and we are ready to go. If you want to do the honors, that's, that's good, that's... For this heist, I called on some old and reliable and trustworthy friends in the form of Dark Eclipse, and Sanchi. All right, we're ready to roll. You better pull this off. All right, let's go for it, people. I'll be calling the shots for mission control. Now with my stupid hair the game had once again given me and the best looking crew ever, we were ready to rock and roll. All right, next stop, the diamond mine. The driver's gonna torch this car as soon as you're inside. We'll set up the getaway cars along your escape route. It all started off brilliantly, as you can tell by Sanchi's driving. It aggravates my hives. It's, uh... Before the storm, running through contingencies and backup plans in my mind. He then made sure we got our 5,000 steps done for the day by parking half a mile away from the large yellow dot on the screen. Okay, now you're one well placed explosive away from walking right. That's the entrance. Follow the tunnel, it'll take you right down till you're on the same level as the vault. Now we just had to wait for our two minute rice to be cooked in the microwave and then we'd be in. Going through the sewer tunnel entrance meant we were already very close to the vault. After murdering a bunch more people and not worrying about how their children would cope without a dad, we had to scan our keycards and make our way down the man trap. Now everyone get through the man trap, down the corridor. Everyone clear? Go! Once inside, I was shocked to find that we were not stealing any green stuff actually some cash, which is quite clearly white. I really don't know how Lester could have got this so wrong. I'll keep you updated on the gas, or more precisely the excruciating and the irreversible nerve agent. We knew that it was possible for just three players to grab all of the cash with limited time if we were granted a good layout, but unfortunately we got the worst possible layout and only came out with 1.6 million. Oh yes, and Dark Eclipse died again. Looking good! Cross the finish line and we're home! Once we had completed the invisible hurdles, we had to murder a bunch more people, ensuring that the world's orphan population levels were as high as ever. And Lester still took some time out to give me some more advice concerning the orgy later. Don't relax once you've made it to the top of the shaft. After strolling out of the casino like a mass murder was an everyday thing, we then had to make our way to our getaway vehicles, which were inconveniently located miles away, which made me think that they were probably put there by Sanchi. Plan B was to then steal a car off the street and drive it to our getaway chopper. Get to the chopper! After briefly trying to lose the cops by disguising myself as a bush, we then made our way up the LSPD building. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! Wow, we really kicked the hornet's nest. It's amazing how fast the police response time is. Well, the guy calling 911 is a billionaire. Oh, or should I say, ex billionaire after his next insurance premium comes through. <laughs> Economic justice is a beautiful thing. 
after a seamless landing. We delivered the cash to the buyer, who then paid us in cash for stealing the cash. Nearly $800,000 richer, and I'm now up to rank 42. Get in! Come on over to the edge and take a look at her. <laughs> we did it. Cleaned it out. Jackpot. Here, have a swig of that. It is muy bueno. Got some for me. I, uh, I thought you went back. I did, but I'm here now. Didn't want to miss the celebrations. During this important cutscene, Dark Eclipse tried his best to photobomb it all, like he was some kid that wanted to get noticed in one of my live streams. We couldn't approach it the same way, they'll be expecting that, but uh, we come at it from a new direction. You're a very resourceful man, Mr. Crest. Here I was, thinking that I was retired. If that wasn't bad enough, Sanchi then joined in. Anything left to give? How about now? And then the moment we've all been waiting for. How did you hack my cell phone? You're going to have to work harder for that. Needless to say, Lester had the time of his life, and the heart attack he suffered from popping too much Viagra was well worth it. If you want to find out what happened when I attempted to rescue a Russian psychopath from a minimum security prison, be sure to join us in the next episode of Riches to Rags.